Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in this video we're going to talk about multimeters. Your need will depend on what you want the multimeter for, what you need to test. If you want to test currents you probably want something like this, a little clamp meter. If you want to test the currents occasionally then one of these standard multimeters will probably be fine because these all have current capabilities as well. But this is a far more capable one where you can measure higher currents above 10 amps and it's convenient because you just clamp it on a wire. Accuracy is not as good as using one of these meters but it gives you a ballpark figure which is probably good enough in most cases. If you worry about measuring voltages, if your meter will be fine. If you worry about accuracy, like if you want three or four decimal places of accuracy then you need to spend more and get one of these better meters like flukes or these higher end Bryman's. But you don't have to do that. You can even get things like the Kiwitz meters, the ST600Y is one of the ones I tested and I did a review on. And that was actually pretty accurate, surprisingly good. But it had a bunch of other issues with it, which is what you get with the budget meters. Lots of shortcuts there where things are done to cut costs to make them cheaper. I do have a multimeter playlist, so if you want to check out the multimeters I've actually reviewed, there is a playlist. I might link it down below or maybe at the end of the video or something, I'm not quite sure where. But there is a playlist I've made which covers all the multimeters I've reviewed and it shows things like accuracy testing and feature set and things like that. I've done all kinds of different videos, so if you're looking for a multimeter, go and check that out. Basically, if a meter will do resistance, if a meter will do voltage, not all meters do millivolts AC or DC. Some do, some don't, some might do both, some might undo one or the other. Some will do capacitance, some won't. I think most meters these days will do diode testing because it's quite common. It depends on what you're looking for really. I mean, if you're just doing general DIY, getting into electronics, trying to learn things, a budget meter like this may be fine. Seriously. I've had this one for like 25 years. If you're not doing any high voltage stuff, if you're only doing low voltage, so safety is not a real concern, then get a budget meter. It's fine, you don't need a bell and whistles fluke. It's nice to have, but you don't need it. If you're doing high voltage stuff, like you're getting into mains AC or switch mode power supplies, things like that, then yeah, you need to start thinking about safety aspects and get a higher end meter like a Bryman or a fluke or something like that or an equivalent. The more you pay, the more you're gonna get in that way. Money wise, the prices can drastically different. A Kiwitz could cost you, what's that, about $30 US or something like that for Kiwitz, up to, you know, thousands. I mean, these flukes, these aren't cheap. I think this is about 500 US or something like that. This is similar. This Bryman here, the A69S. This one is a bit cheaper, so is that. This is cheaper again. This is actually a really good meter. I used this one for quite a while. This is the Bryman BM235. Has a good feature set. And it's a good little robust little meter, it's not bad. Good safety features, not as good as a flu, but it's pretty up there. And this one came from EV Blog, so Dave EV Blog has got his store, you can buy them from him. If you want a slightly better feature set and better specs, then the BM786 is the next one up, which is what this one is. This is also from Dave's store as well. This has got a really good continuity test on it, this one. It's impressive. This is like the fastest continuity testing, this is the second fastest is this one. Just to give you some idea. So continuity, capacitance, resistance, voltage, diode test. Those are quite important things to have, all right? Millivolts, really nice to have if you're gonna be doing smaller circuitry. We're trying to check for minor components. Millivolts is very handy to have, but watch out because not all meters have it. Some have millivolts DC only, like this one here has only got millivolts DC, no millivolts AC, and that's a top end fluke. This Bryman 869S over here, that's got millivolts AC and DC, it's got both. This is AC and DC millivolts. The 786 has also got AC and DC millivolts. This Fluke 175 has only got DC millivolts. I've also got a Fluke 117, I think it was that one, only does AC millivolts, doesn't do DC millivolts. So things like that to watch out for. If you look at the clamp meters, this is a really good one to buy if you don't already have one. It's really compact, really small. It's only three and a half digits. It's a 2000 count meter. It's really handy. It's got a voltage, diode test, continuity, capacitance, AC and DC volts, two amps, 20 amps, 100 amps ranges, AC and DC, and non-contact voltage detection. This is a really versatile little meter, and it's quite compact. You put leads on the end here to hook into that, so I'll probably put a link in for this down below. It's one of the reviews I've actually done. Accuracy-wise, I don't know how accurate it is. I don't actually remember. If you're looking for ballpark figures, it's probably fine. It's only a Unity, you know, it's not a big brand. It's one of the budget brands, but it's a slightly better budget brand. And this is UT210E, by the way. And this is a good little meter. I quite like this, one of my favorite ones. If you're doing current testing, then this is the one to get. If you're not so worried about doing currents or you do them occasionally, then any other meter, as I was saying before. So the main consideration is probably going to be how much you want to spend. You do get what you pay for. If you aren't expecting to do much electronics work, you're only 
really getting into it just a little bit you don't really know what you're doing or you're just trying to tinker with things a little bit one of budget meters is probably going to be okay for you just to get started off and give you a bit of a footing give you an understanding of what you actually need because if you don't know what you need yet it's pretty hard to choose so in that case getting a budget meter will be absolutely fine it will give you a ballpark and that's what will end up happening oh, i wish it did this and i wish it did that and make sure you make a mental note of these or even write them down even so when you do replace that meter you can get a meter that has those features that you want so a good example i'll turn all these on to dc volts I'll even do this one. This one defaults to AC volts. So you can see straight away digits. That's three and a half digits. That's three and a half digits. So is that. That's four and a half digits. So is this one. That's also three and a half digits. I'm thinking, okay, well, if these are all three and a half, what's different? Well, it might be a 2,000 count, 4,000 count, 6,000 count even. Could it be a 9,000 count? You don't know. That's a 6,000 count. So is this one. I don't know what this one is. That's 2,000 count. And this 6,000 count as well. well. This one's actually 60,000 count, as is this one. There are some extra features, like this one here. This has now got an extra digit. This is now a 4.5 digit meter. You can do on these, it's got high res mode. This bright one here, it's 4.5 digits right now. Now it's 5.5 digits. So this is why this is quite an expensive meter it can actually do quite a bit of digits. Significantly higher resolution than these other meters. But that may or may not matter to you. You may not care about resolution. I mean, do you really need to know if you've got below one millivolt of accuracy going on? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Depends what you're doing. Generally, even three and a half digits is enough. In this little cheat meter here, it's a 2000 count, but only shows three digits at a time. The first one will just turn to a one. So it goes like 1999 or something. You know, there's lots of cheat meters around like this. Loads of them. So many to choose from. So in my beginner video series, I've actually done an Electronics for Beginners series. This is the Electronics Tools for Beginners. In the Electronics for Beginners series, I've actually done a multimeter video. I've gone into a lot more depth about that. So maybe you want to look at that one as well. I'm going to check that video series out and just check out the multimeters if you're looking at that part of it. What I'm trying to say is basically you don't need a fluke. Unless you're doing high voltage stuff, then you do need a fluke or a Brineman or some kind of equivalent which is designed to handle those safety ratings and be safe for you to use those high voltages if something goes wrong. Because the last thing you want is a multimeter like this on mains voltages blowing up in your hand. That would not be good for you. Whereas if it happens to a fluke, I think you'd be fine. So basically, when it comes to multimeters, you've got two choices. You buy the cheapest one you can, which has the features you think you need if you're starting out, and figure out what you actually need. Then later on, replace it once you do know what you actually need. The other option is if you've got the money, buy the best you can. That's the second choice. You go one extreme or the other. You buy the cheapest one, figure out what you need, or you just get the best you can afford and just splash out. Because a multimeter is a tool which you're going to have for many years, especially if you get one of these better ones. Okay, If you get a cheaper meter, maybe not. It may not last you so long. This one's lasted me that long because, well, it's been sitting in my car and I've only used the thing about three times. But it still works fine. You can't necessarily say that one of cheaper meters that are around these days, these budget ones, will still work in five years' time. You don't know. It may not work. But if you buy the best you can afford, your chances will be better because long-term, a meter is always going to be useful to you. Always. Even if it gets old and you find, oh, those features doesn't have and you want to buy a second meter, having two meters is always a good thing. But sometimes you need to measure more than one thing at once. You could be measuring a power supply, which has got multiple outputs, and you need to measure three or four hours at the same time. You can turn it on, check it, turn it back off again. And you can do that with multiple meters. Hook up as many as you need at the same time. Don't think that only one meter is all you need. Sometimes two, three, four is handy. And don't think just because you buy one now and think, oh, maybe it doesn't have quite the right feature set and you're gonna potentially waste some money, you won't be the case. It's still gonna be useful. Even if you find, oh, it doesn't have capacitance or AC millivolts or DC millivolts or whatever it may be, you can always get that meter later on. Once you actually know truly what you need, then you've got two meters and it can be handy for you. And something I haven't even mentioned in this, these are just handheld multimeters. There's also desktop multimeters and benchtop ones. They come in various sizes. Up here, for example, I've got a Siglant STM3065X, which is a six and a half digit multimeter, which does, well, everything, all these things, basically, and a bit more. 
that's a precision altimeter. There's also got lower models like five and a half digit, four and a half digit versions as well, which are cheaper. There's also other brands use Key Sight. There's loads of them. You can even get budget brands from China, which are that kind of format, which also work quite well. There's also the older style formats, which are quite wide, quite big, bulky ones. Those can be handy if you've got a bench space and get them quite cheaply used. I've got a bunch of used multimeters. Another great one's a Fluke 45. That's quite a good multimeter, four and a half digit multimeter by Fluke, bench top format. It's got the same sorts of features. This has got a very handy multimeter to have, but I find these are more convenient. If you have a bench top one, then you're tied to being on a bench, and you know that's it. Sometimes that's fine. That's all you need. But I actually quite like portable ones. Check out the playlist down there for the rest of the video series. This playlist over here is YouTube. Thanks just to watch. There's a subscribe link over here if you haven't already subscribed, which you should do so you can catch all the videos. And there's a Patreon support link over here if you want to help support the channel and help me to make more content. Thanks a lot. Bye.